Welcome back. It's still Plus Politics. And we are looking at the dimension the protests are taking. And where, what is the way forward? We still have with us Mr. Daley Farutimi, a legal practitioner, and also Greg Ogyogwa, who is a political scientist. Straight to you, Mr. Dele Farutimi. Uh, um, fr I mean, Greg has mentioned the issue of federalism. He has talked about the state police. He has talked about devolving power. I, 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 as much as uh, I don't want to call you pessimist, I'm, I'm always looking at there is a reason why you are hungry. There is a reason why you're not happy with the way things are. And that is what I studied about these young people, as if I'm older, about the protesters. They have come out to say that this country can work. So what is the end point of this protest? Do you think we are heading in the right direction? Um, let me first of all say this. The only reason I am sat here having this interview, at least for me, is because I feel like I can be a voice for those who are unable to speak to you and who are unable to come to answer these questions that are being asked. And before I answer this question, there is something my dear friend, Mr. Greg, had said that must be cleared up, and then I'll proceed to answer your question. Okay. And that is the attempt to bring a line of division between the ruling class. When I said the Nigerian state, the interest of the ruling class is one, and they have shown very clearly that party lines do not matter to them. So when I speak in relation to the state, I am talking about the class that benefits from the Nigerian state. So I'll let that, I'll leave that alone so that I will not be re litigating an issue that should not really be leading to argument. All of us should be clear as to who the enemies are and who the friends are for all of us. So let me leave that for one side. Now, when we talk about solutions going forward, it is difficult to negotiate with a man who has a gun on the table and is dictating the terms of the peace that he seeks without listening to what I am saying. The grievances you are seeing on the street that are spilled over into NSAS is not really about NSAS. Any wise or smart person should be able to see that by now. If it was about NSAS, the moment they renamed it SWAT, you would have seen people throwing up their hands and accepting that they are fine. But they know that you can change name. If the underpinning philosophy remains the same, they will do the same thing. It's old wine in new bottle. What the protesters are demanding, which any sane person should be hearing loud and clear, is simple. Give us the rights of citizenship. No policeman anywhere in the world would have the temerity to turn his gun on a citizen. So first thing first, the n okay. protest is a demand for citizenship. The Nigerian is a citizen of the world, but you are asking him to accept slavery in his own country. That is why he's kicking. That's why he's not hearing anything you are saying. Because the fundamental of his demand has not been addressed. They can set up all these commissions in the state. They are attempts at palliatives. But unfortunately, the people on the street are not fooled. The state has no credibility. Whether that's a PDP or PDP, APC, PPP, whatever they call themselves, as far as the man on the street is concerned, is one class. There are no lines of division between them. Edo is even a very beautiful illustration for the story. The tickets in the last election were reversed. In the previous one, the same people, different parties. So for the people on the street, this illusory division that Mr. Greg is making between PDP and APC, we don't make it. It's the same family. The political syncretism has meant that if they were, if we were talking religion, they are neither Muslim nor Christians. They go to mosque and they go to church. They are the same. So for us, let's leave this division. As far as the average man on the street who is protesting today is concerned, 
his demand is for equalization of citizenship. Okay, Mr. Dele. Now, when you now bring it around, and we now start talking about federalism, we are talking about state police, all those are the tangential issues. If it is state police, perhaps mm -hmm. it will be easier for me to hold the governor accountable. That is what is talk that is the only relevance of state police to the discussion. The totality of our argument is about the validity of our citizenship. We uh, oh, Mr. Dele, I, I want to stay with you. I, I want to stay with you. There, there's something I'd like to get clear uh, while you're explaining. Are we not still going to have people in power, irrespective of their party? So I'm looking at how do we demand citizenship when we still have these beneficiaries you've described as political class. I'm looking at how do we have people out of the street to say we now have a government that we can call our oh. own. Oh, that's very simple now. That's pretty easy. All the protesters need to see is honesty on the part of government. Honesty. Not all these uh, you are sponsoring attacks against them and then you are trying to blame it on them and then demonize them as violent men so that you can justify cracking down on them. That, those are not the actions of a government that is desirous of speaking peace to the protesters. If anybody is pouring petrol on the fire, it is the government that is refusing to acknowledge the validity of the grievances, that is finding ways to compromise the demand demonize the protesters, put it down violently, and ignore the grievances. They are the ones pouring fire, pour petrol on the fire. If you want those people on the street to go home tomorrow morning, I dare President Buhari, let him announce to Nigerians that I have, in conjunction with the National Assembly, agreed to do a fundamental restructure of the way we govern ourselves, which is within the powers of the National Assembly, as discredited as it might be, and as much as the like of me have no confidence in it, we still recognize the fact that we need to move forward somehow. If the Nigerian state, I repeat it, is one, if the Nigerian state should find the grace to meet the protesters honestly, honestly, say, okay, all that uh, commission of inquiry nonsense, we all, those, those are time-buying devices. Okay. And it's not anyone. Okay, th thank you very much for your position. Let me listen to Greg. He's been smiling, he's been giggling. Let me have your take on the way forward. Why mentioning all the things that need to be done in terms of federalism, state police, and several solutions? Let's look at the immediate solution, which he has mentioned that if the political class can address the people honestly, and not give it any kind of partisan coloration. Don't you think that's the way forward? I mean, that, um, I know that my brother probably has never contested an elective office before. I have. So it's not so straightforward as to say people should do this or to do that. There are different colorations. The different colorations. You can see that there are people who are pro SAR and there are people anti SAR. Are you saying the people that, who are pro SAR do not have a democratic right to express their opinion? You can't say that. If you say that the people who are anti SAR have a democratic right, you have to be specific. You cannot have a modern democracy without being particular, without being specific. There are no, there are no broad strokes any longer, not with social media and, in, and the internet. You have to be specific. Look, this, the, the issues in Edo State are totally different from the issues in Zampara. Anybody who doesn't recognize that is being naive, politically naive, and is putting the people in danger by engendering, for example, the emotions that the people in Zampara State are, are promoting to engender those same, image, those same emotions in Edo State. You are putting the people in Edo State in in danger. And if you engender the same emotions that the people in the state are feeling in Zampara or in Lagos, which is an opposition government, they are putting those people in danger. Mr. Greg, so, you know, Mr. Greg, leaders, Mr. Greg let me interject. Leaders. Let me interject so that we can stay on this issue. Are we say, uh, do we need to argue the fact that what happened in Edo State in the last election 
was just a change of individuals and not the, we know that these were the two people that contested. Are we saying that the political class are not the same on when or what it means to, to the governed? I need to be clear on that. Look, it's very not an ideological difference. It's an ideological between those who wanted to take power and those who retain power. There's an ideological difference, and the Edo people chose. Let me tell you something today, which I was hesitant to say before, because it will sound very partisan. The Edo state elections was a spark, was an igniting spark to what you are seeing as happening across Nigeria today. When they say Edo state is the heartbeat of Nigeria, people take it as superficial. And they think that it is just, you know, it's another catchphrase to just market Edo state tourism, arts and culture and all, all that. But then what happened with the elections, energize Nigerians to, to realize, to believe that the people actually have the power, the power to make their choices, the power to dictate to, the, to what they call federal might, to what they call godfathers. The people of Edo State prove that it was not uh, that way. It was that the people will lead. Now, haven't done that. Power without control is dangerous. Absolutely. You can't tell me that because you have power, cannot control that power. You know, you start a rolling engine uh, at 150 miles per hour and you don't have brakes, you don't have control. How are you going to take, turn the corner? In politics, because struggle without structure is failure. You cannot struggle, you cannot resist, you cannot protest and not organize afterwards. At the end of the day, look, you know, I, I, I love it when I hear people say that they are struggling and that they are protesting and we've been doing I was glad when my brother, when my brother said that in 1977 he was doing um, uh, Ali Mon School and he was in primary four. I was in secondary school at that time. I was in secondary school and we were already doing that. And I can tell him that Kule Adepoju, who died in the University of Ibadu, his father was my neighbor because I went to start school, University of Ibadu. His father, Professor Adepoju, was my neighbor. So I knew the guy. So the struggle didn't start today. Ali must go. Amadou Ali who was Federal Commissioner of Education when they started the NYC uh, process. Kuli Adepoju was the first Nigerian student at that, and we have not forgotten. Oh, so sad. so sad. I, 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 I wish we can get him back, but I will come back to you by the time the network comes back. Mr. Dele Farotimi, uh, why try not to go into some kind of argument? But there's something he said, which I would like you to respond to. We cannot struggle without a structure. What are we fighting for? If we we'll struggle, if we we'll say we want this, what exactly is the way forward so that we don't have to go back to the street in the next five years, in the next four years, and we can say that this is indeed our dreamland. Mr. Dilley. Okay, let me, I, I, I have always been of the firm opinion that you do not argue facts. We can argue opinions. Mr. Greg, for the sake of history and for the sake of the memory of, of Mr. Adepeju, Maybe, you're, maybe you, are, you are an old man. You've confirmed that you are older than me, so that makes you an old man as well. <laughs> Your memory is not as good as it used to be. His name is Adepeju. He was killed in 1971. Kunle Adepeju. Now, let us be clear about this, sir. Um, oh. I would run away from nitpicking, so I'll just stick with the general. What happens in uh, those states? And those state people are better informed than I am. I can't speak to that. But I will just say this. We should not be arguing about the fact that the attack on protesters was state-sponsored. Let's not argue that one. We should also by now not be arguing. What the state government, where a federation, stop trying to say state, don't incite a, a, a violence in a good state. What state? Is it APC, federal government? Or is it a do state PDP government? Okay. But don't incite white vision. Who is inciting violence? If you say state, what state? Federal state or a, a state state? Okay. I, I, I guess the network is not uh, uh, really, really flaunting over there. But trust me, we will 
stay on this issue as much as we can, but our time is fast spent for us to listen to the two sides. But if I could act as a moderator, which I think I am, what we are saying, what he meant, Mr. Delivero to me, is that state here, as a political scientist, which you understand better, has to do with people in power. So whether federal, whether state. And for Edo State, I want to agree with you, Mr. Greg, from your position, that what happened today was not state-sponsored. It has to do with jailbreak. It has to do with criminals. So I think it's okay to leave it at that level. But bottom line is, let us do the best to ensure that we stay united in the struggle. We are focused in the struggle. It is violence-free. It is, it, is, it is not about throwing tantrums at one another. Because at the end of the day, we will all be beneficiaries, both the governed and the people in government. Uh, I wish we could still be able to get... Okay, good. Uh, please, I'm so sorry for the network uh, fluctuation. If we yeah, can help no us with uh, just one minute submission. Let me start with Mr. Dilley. See, um, unfortunately, we are where we are. If it's not NEPA, it's the, it, it will be the telecom network. Thanks for the minute, and I'll just spend that minute saying this. The Nigerian government and its rulers have the opportunity, and they should take it, to speak mm. with the men and women, young men and women, who are demanding that their future be secured. All the protests you are seeing out there is the demand of the disenfranchised. They are worried about their future. They can see the trajectory of the country, and they can see that it's not going anywhere positive. That's why they are complaining. Mm. Palliatives will not move them. Sponsoring violence against them, seeking to demonize them in order to legitimize the deployment of violence, will not solve the problem. If you repress them today, if, if the Nigerian state goes ahead and deploys all its many wiles, uh, demonize them, attack them, break their solidarity, break the rank, I guarantee them, they are coming back again. Okay. And the next time they come back, they will be more virulent because the Nigerian state is teaching them how to engage with it. They okay. already know now that next time they are going to protest, they can expect the state to sponsor attacks against them. They will be prepared. Okay, Mr. Delifaro, to me. Your time is up. Thank you for your time. We quite appreciate it. Mr. Greg, please help me make it not more than 60 seconds. Your but final submission. One thing, I can say, well, one thing I can say straight away is this. Struggle well, without structure is meaningless. We have been doing this for a very long time. So, you know, while Barista Dele can be saying this, if he knows that the Nigerian constitution will hold sway. If you want to take power, go and set up a political party. Fund it. They have raised 500 million for, for the youth. Let them use it to fund a political party. Political actors take over power, send them to the House of Assembly, National Assembly, okay. change the constitution and then make the necessary changes. Anything less than that, you are whipping up sentiments, you are putting people in danger by sending them all out on the streets on emotions and sentiments. And sending them, them Greg. danger. From, Thank from you so people much. Who don't have the same so that is dangerous. You who see? is sending who? It, it's not is inciting dangerous. them. Let's, let's, let's put the record sorry, straight. Please. This I'm is... sorry, this has to be, this has to be clarified. I have never sent anyone anywhere. Mr. Greg will do well. He will do well. Can we listen? Can we listen? No, 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 no. Stick with the truth, sir. Tell the truth. Tell the truth, sir. I just sent that you want anywhere. Tell the truth. 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 Okay. 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 Mr. Yeah. Dele, Mr. Greg, don't worry. The truth is out there. People can hear, people can decipher, people can interpret what both of you have said. So I want to believe that nobody is inciting anybody. People are mature to interpret what the information that is passed there. Thank you once again. Dele Faro to me. I, I would like to be called a retired lawyer. Thank you for your time. And Mr. Greg Ogiogua, a political scientist, your position is well noted. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break, very short breather. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take on this issue. Please don't go anywhere.
Why this is not strange, that is, the purported hijack or the violent nature of the protest, the essence and the core of the unprecedented demonstration by the faceless Nigerian youth should not be lost in us, which is a reform of the police institution. Yes, it is true. The protest may have gone beyond answers. As a matter of fact, it has gone beyond the answers. It is a call to end of impunity, unaccountable governance, waste in governance, and many other government shenanigans. For record, this protest is not and should not be about regime change. It is about institutional reform. Whether there are hijackers, hoodlums, street urchins, public nuisance, and even attack on security operatives, and even killing of protesters, the message hopefully will stand the test of time. The voices of the youths have been heard. What remains? Will it be heeded? My advice is that the current situation, I mean, the current administration should write its name in gold by implementing this reform holistically. This is how far we can go on Plus Politics. Let the conversation continue on all our social media platforms. I remain yours truly, Kayode Ladeide, saying bye for now.